you're tuned in to Community Conversations with the Trio, a weekly show that explores key topics in health, education, politics, and business. You can always find us on the web at cctrio.com or get connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, and iTunes by searching The CC Trio. And now, your host, the Trio, Dr. G, Sean D, and main man Michael Duff on Community Conversations with the Trio. So, Melissa Erickson, welcome in uh, to Community Thank Conversations with the Trio here. The, again, you, you've been with us before. Uh, the conversation around education uh, is seems like now it feels more ongoing than it has been in the past. Uh, yeah. But uh, but a soldier being in the field for a long time, like yourself, uh, maybe it's you know it's an everyday occurrence. But uh, begin by at least telling folks a little bit about your background and uh, what what. What has you, where you are now with okay. the Alliance for Public Schools um, here? So, yeah, so I'm working with a group called the Alliance for Public Schools statewide, and, and here, you know, we're the Hillsborough Alliance for Public Schools. And when you, it's interesting when you say um, talking about education isn't new to me. It isn't, but talking with the people I've been talking with over the past six months as we've launched this effort here in Hillsborough is new because we've definitely widened who we're talking to. Mm-hmm. So, it's not just what we call, um, or what anyone would call an echo chamber, which is people who are engaged in education and think, oh, we have to do something about this. This is starting to bring in the community in a much um, broader sense. So we have two different initiatives that we're working on that we've launched kind of back-to-back here in Hillsborough. One of them is Parent University, which is kind of self-explanatory. Um, it's for parents, uh, and this is a partnership with the school district um, to bring parents out on a Saturday to take classes Um, to learn about what's going on in their children's school and how they can help their children succeed. And so we've had two events. take classes there. Take classes. In the actual... They are in classes. Is there like like SAT or GRE before you come to university? We we have actually discussed the idea of not testing because, you know, (laughs) we're not not going to start doing testing. (laughs) Um, But we we have discussed the idea of having... Um, of eventually evolving to the point where um, parents could get um, credits okay. in certain fields. So, like, you could take a leadership track or an advocacy track or a curriculum track so that you could say, if I really want to become a parent expert in this, what are the classes I need to take to get there? Oh, so oh. that is one of the things we actually have discussed so that um, parents would kind of be able to know how to pick their curriculum in order to um, become better um, equipped to support their students. Okay. Can you give me a couple of examples of the classes that yeah, we have absolutely. at Parent University? So um, two of the biggest and most popular classes that we've held um, are on the Common Core, so explaining what the Common Core is, um, which is the new set of um, curriculum standards that has been adopted by 46 states, including Florida. So there was um, an overview class of what is the Common Core, um, what's the status of implementation here in Hillsborough County schools, and what does it mean for your child in the classroom? So that was kind of the overview class. And then the other one was um, on STEM, what is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. So an overview of all um, STEM programs. Those were two of the most popular courses. Um, We also had courses on how to pick the best elementary school for your child or the best Mm -hmm. middle school or the best high school. So not only, you know, knowing that the option of a neighborhood school is there, but what choice and magnet options are open to you as a parent. Um, And how do you navigate the system into getting your child into the school that's best suited for them. Um, And then this last session, so we've run two parent universities. We ran one on March 2nd, and we had just over 200 people there. And then the one um, that we just ran on April 27th were 500 um, people oh, registered. Wow. Not quite all 500 showed up. I think some of them woke up at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning and said, I'll catch up next time. They were playing time. golf with Sean yeah. and Dr. G. Yeah. There, there we go. <laughs> uh, I think I was playing golf. <laughs> but that one, we had a specific focus on transitions. So transitioning your child into kindergarten from fifth grade to middle school or from eighth grade to high school. So working on those transition points for kids because we thought that was really a timely topic um, for this um, time. But yeah, so those are some of the classes that we've talked about. So parent university is one of the things we're working on. And then, so that's, that is a more traditional role of parents go into a school and they have information disseminated at them. 
time. So here's what's going on. Here's the information and, and how you get it. The other initiative we have is called Community Conversations, very, you know, apt to be on this show. Yeah, we will uh, take our fee. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we may copyright it for you. So. And ours has, and ours has, ours has an apple for the O, so there you go. I did see the apple in it. Yeah, we have an apple for the O, so it's definitely education-focused. Um, but... Uh, that is more of a bottom-up kind of communication. So this is in cooperation um, with the Hillsborough Cl County um, Classroom Teachers Association, so the teachers group, and we've been working together um, to decide to have the community begin to discuss what do they want for public education. And when we say public education, we're really talking um, the spectrum of cradle to career because the public invests dollars from pre-K all the way up through public universities and colleges. So we invest in schools. What do we want as a community to get out of them? For our kids, for our businesses, for our community as a whole, what do we expect um, when we invest um, more dollars in anything but healthcare in education? What does the community want? So we had one of those events on um, April 1st. We had about 150 people come out. Um, prior to that event, we did um, some crowdsourcing. So we had crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing which okay. is going out to the crowd and deciding what they think um, and having them tell you what they think. So we did okay. that through face-to-face um, -face crowdsourcing, literally going to crowds, not necessarily big crowds, but meetings and talking to people um, and just saying, what do you want to talk about about education? When you hear we're going to talk about education, what are the topics you think? Um, and then we also had an online survey that people could fill out and say what they wanted. So they self-identified um, Funding, mm -hmm. teachers and teaching, uh, testing, and parent and community engagement mm -hmm. as the topics that they wanted to talk about. So we had breakout sessions that night, um, and then uh, everyone pretty much agreed that it was the beginning of a conversation, and in two hours we were not going to finish everything. Mm -hmm. And so we have our follow-up event coming up on May 18th. Um, okay from 9.30 to noon at the University Area Community Development Center for people to come yeah. out and join the conversation. If you were there before, please come back. And if you weren't there, come on out and join us because we're going to be talking about um, those same kind of four subjects, but we're calling it a day of action so that people are not going to, we're not going to just talk, we're going to start doing something about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that, then the doing something part of it. Mm -hmm. So now it's uh, you kind of framed a conversation with these um, four key areas. So is this, um, if I just wanted to get my point heard, is this that, is this oh, that time to come out or there's yeah, absolutely do I need to come ready to work or both? Okay. Both because, um, we see this as, as probably a 12 to 18 month process of conversation so that we make sure that we're getting, this is a huge community for those um, listeners who might not know. We have about 200,000 students in 226 K-12 schools and about 15 other school sites um, in a thousand square miles. So we're the eighth largest school district in the country okay. in about the 45th largest city because we're not a, just an urban district. Just, but children we're county are county wide. Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. We're county wide. So you're talking wow. about that in, so the thousand square miles is like the size of Rhode Island. So we have a school district that's Spans size the Rhode size Island. of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And so very few places in this country can you go to one school district where you have urban, suburban, and rural all in the same all district. Same. And so to really get the community engaged is going to take a while. Mm -hmm. And so this process of making sure that new people still get to be heard, as you brought up, Sean, but that people who have been there who want to do something feel like there's something for them to do, we want to kind of keep this rolling so that there will always be a place to be heard and a place to keep talking. But the people who want to start moving on to doing something about it, there'll be options for them as well. All right. So, so, and the idea of what to expect, uh, folks can come out, like I said, be heard, uh, yes. participate uh, as to the, the design of it. It's a, it is in the, the morning. It is in the morning. 12. What? 930 to 12. Um, we're going to have. Can similar, I come in and out? Is, is absolutely. It, okay. you could, yeah. Come in and out. 
Um, it's going to be broken up into kind of a recap session, and then you're going to get to attend two breakouts because last time people could only go to one of the topics and people felt they wanted more. Okay. So for people who were there last time, if you want to go to the same topic because you want to move to action and then immerse yourself in a brand new topic, you could do that. If you're new, you could go to a couple topics to figure out where you fit or where you best want to um, start working. And um, one of the really exciting pieces is that there will be students there who were there the first time. Um, some students in Hillsborough County Public Schools will be there facilitating their own session about students having a voice of what they want for public education, which I think is really, really an exciting piece of the work. Okay, so for this event, it starts 9.30 a.m. to noon mm -hmm. on May 18th at the University Area Community Development Center. That's up in North Tampa there off of yes. Fletcher, I believe. Yeah. Fletcher and, 22nd. And 22nd. Like that. A lot of people know it as the Victor Christ Building because okay. usually when you say that, you'll see kind of lights in their eyes. So okay. it's the Victor Christ Building. Behind the university and the, yes. the mall there. Yeah. Because of that time, one, you know what I'm going to have to ask. Right? Can you be late? Uh, no, no. I'm always late. <laughs> uh, is there some... Refreshments, or should I have refreshments uh, before I, I get there? You know, yeah. you know, you gotta ask. Gotta ask you know, gotta you ask get up food. early in the morning, you grab the kids, you run to this event. Yeah. And then, there, you know. there will not be breakfast. Okay. Um, we, there will be coffee and water. Okay. So coffee if you're if you're someone who just requires, if you just require liquids in the morning, okay. we will yeah. have that covered. Now you gotta but, ask. Yeah. You, know, you never know. <laughs> Uh, that's, a, that's a very important question. That's a very yeah. important question. Uh, so the, going back a second, because you mentioned the uh, students being yes. you know, having their um, at least a session for them, yes. uh, for them by them kind of thing. Um, I, now I've I've heard and just want to get your take on it. I, I've been in conversations where um, parents have and and adults, um, not knowing if they are parents now, but adults have had the conversation of. Why, why are we asking kids mm -hmm. about education or about what to do or to, you know, why are we asking their opinion? We should be telling them as adults what to do and um, here's what you're going to do. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Well, I think that education? when you talk about some of the subjects that we were talking about, they have amazing insight. And I think they showed us that at the first conversation when people were talking about um, testing, for example, there, there was, you know, talk about testing and you had a student speak up to say, um, do you realize that from net, from tomorrow, and this was March, you know, April 1st, from Monday onward, we can't use our media center because it will be closed for testing. Mm -hmm. So at our high school, we can't go into our media center now because they'll be testing every single day. So basically it, it takes over the entire school takes over Correct. what they're Basically, there are four is yep. regular day-to-day -day learning. And I thought that that really put a absolutely concrete picture on what people were saying is there's too much testing. Because saying there's too much testing versus a student saying, I can't use my library anymore mm -hmm. because of the amount of testing. So I think students absolutely at least have insight into what all of these policies and things mean in the classroom. So I think there's absolutely um, getting them to the, the, point, the point where they're decision makers is totally different than just hearing their voice um, so that they can express what's working and not working at the classroom level. You know, let, let's get to the point. One of the things that me and Sean obviously deal with on a regular basis because we're in the community, this is community conversations with the trio. There's a lot of organizations doing great work. They're doing great things. This sounds fantastic. Parent University, uh, I need that because I have no idea uh, when my kids are coming home with these different FCAT this and, you know, he's doing math on one day and writing on the next week. And I'm like, what? And when I was there, you went in, you tested all day, you went home early, and it was over. Mm -hmm. And uh, you the past, you did. Uh, what's the point? What, what, what's the end game? We're going to have these community conversations about how these parent universities what should uh, our listeners expect that if everything goes where we want it, where we design it, what should be at the end game? Okay. My little elevator speech about what this is about is we want to shift education from a personal value to a community value. When you hold education as a personal value, you make sure you get what you need for your kid. And lots of parents, and I would say most parents hold education as a, as a personal value. They want to make sure that their child gets the most um, out of the education system that they possibly can. There's this tipping point then when you realize you can't get everything your child needs until it's available for every child. 
and starting to make sure that that's available for every child is when we tip to making education a community value. And when we make education a community value, then we as a community decide what we want and we make sure that the people who are responsible for providing that for our children do it. And so that's kind of what we want to do is to come up with the idea of what we want and then methodically go about the process of making sure it's available to every child growing up in this community. Fantastic. And so piggybacking off of that, so the, the, the value, the community value, um, having choice, having options mm -hmm. um, as parents, and that's, you know, I talked a little bit about that earlier as well. Um, in the, this legislative session mm -hmm. um, that we're currently in here in Florida, uh, there, there was a bill went up last year, uh -huh. um, didn't go so far, got a little bit further this year, uh, uh, well, got very far this year, talking about the parent trigger bill. Correct. Um, recently heard, uh, I got the news this week that it looks like it will not, uh, it, it, will, it not will not become happen law in this Florida year. Yet. So, so for folks who are not aware, can you give us a quick synopsis yes. of what that even parent, is? Parent trigger is, um, allowing parents to sign a petition to choose one of four turnaround options. Now, the four turnaround options are available to so every school. So this is school. a bad school. It's a D school, F school? D, chronically failing. Chronically, chronically failing. Two D's, a yeah. D and a F. Well, that's actually part of the problem with the legislation is that chronically Be failing minus. is not necessarily a specific. <laughs> what, and when you start... When it depends you know, on what neighborhood is in. Let's be real. What absolutely. neighborhood is in. I mean, it no, chronically on, failing in Tampa Palm is going to be different than chronically, chronically failing, failing. in Palm River. <laughs> and so, I mean, chronically failing... And, and even the definition of what is failing, you know, is not in the bill. It's in other bills. So they could change what failing means once they open it up. So it's just if a school is termed chronically failing, um, parents would have the ability to have a petition drive um, to choose one of the four turnaround options that is currently available to every school in the school districts anyways. These are turnaround options that are already available. Mm -hmm. But this gave parents this mechanism for going in and changing it. Now, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Parents get to have a say. Well, first of all, parents already have a say. Um, there's a process um, in Florida called the um, uh, School Advisory Council, or SAC committees, mm -hmm. um, who work through um, what is another acronym, the SIP, which is the School Improvement Plan, the SIP. Mm -hmm. And so schools are quietly turned around every single day using that process. And parents are mandated to stay at the table for the entire time. The problem with parent trigger is once they turn the once they have the petition turned in, correct, the they lose control. The, um, if one of the four options the is chosen, the parents lose control. So now they've chosen the option, but they don't have a guaranteed seat at the table anymore mm -hmm. necessarily, especially mm -hmm. if the option is chosen is charters. Because what are, um, before you get there, what are the four options? The four options are um, a restart, where they basically go in and, and clean school. house. And like they just did the school up north there. They correct. Fired everybody. Fired everybody. Start over from scratch. Scratch. Yeah. They could turn it into a magnet school, um, so that they you know create cur attractor it's programs. Or um, the program that you, the school that that the school district chose that option for that you might be familiar with is Middleton High School. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so Middleton High School was having, um, and they created magnet programs there so that it's one of the top technology high schools in the country now. Yep. Um, and it's attracting it's students. Two, no yes, problem. absolutely. So it's, it's choosing, it's attracting children from all over the county. Um, and then there is um, the uh, restaffing model where they don't just, they don't totally close down the school, but everybody who has a job there has to reapply and they have to start to, you know, they start to look at, um, so they're, they're given some flexibility from um, traditional um, labor um, situations. And then the fourth option is the charter option. And so... Um, is charter like private? Charters are public schools, but they're run by um, either nonprofit or for-profit companies. Companies behind it. Right? Correct. Now, Dickerson the, Enterprises, basically. Yes. Could be. Could be. Could be. <laughs> and so, and there are some charters... Actually, 100 Black Men has a number of charter absolutely. schools as well. Okay. And, and there are some charters that are doing... The, the purpose of charters is to allow flexibility that does not exist within the, the current public structure to do 
um, niche education. Charters actually came about before magnets mm -hmm. so that schools could be designed to um, give more individualized education for children. So it's not that charters are the problem. Mm -hmm. The issue is the for-profit charters mm -hmm. that come in and now will take over a public asset. So your public school that the public has paid for, that the public, the neighborhood has probably given additionally and above and beyond from what was, you know, first in that school is now, could now be turned over lock, stock, and barrel to a for-profit company. Wow. And that for-profit company can hire a non-profit company to go out and collect signatures. So, you know, so, so they could be going out and knocking on doors and saying, hey, turn this school over. What they don't tell you is, number one, your child doesn't have a guaranteed seat at that charter school. Because mm -hmm. charters can have different requirements. Um, things like if you don't volunteer, if you don't volunteer 40 hours a month, your child can't go to that school. So now the parents who own that, you know, who decided to turn over that school, um, their child doesn't even have a guaranteed seat. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, parents, there's no SAT committees, required SAT committees at charter schools. Um, and also they don't even have to have a board of directors that's in the state. What? So for, no, for example, there's a charter school in Bradenton right now that the parents are having problems because they're, the board is not in the state and they're trying to turn over that school. Um, they want, they want to basically pull the trigger on a charter school, but charter schools aren't subject to the trigger. Right. So over half of the failing schools in Florida are charters, but they wouldn't be subject to the trigger. So you oh, couldn't turn them around anyway. You couldn't turn them around anyways. Ain't that something. Now, one of the biggest myths I about... I just to say. <laughs> yeah. One of the biggest myths was, and you heard people say it, people who listen to the legislature, if they dared to, we don't want any child stuck in a failing school. Of course not. Hmm. Right now, children are not. There are opportunity scholarships. There are choice and magnet options. Any child who is in a chronically failing school is given a plethora of choices of where they can go. The irony is, with Trigger, they could end up stuck in a failing school because it can take over three years to institute the Trigger, the turnaround yeah. option, and then because they're in turnaround, they don't necessarily have all the same choice options they had before. So now the child is stuck in a failing school. Okay. Well, this is so, the conversation with Trigger, so we like to get to the meeting. So who in the hell put this bill forward? I don't, you don't need to say the actual rep and all that, but who's really, who's the scene? This doesn't sound good for anybody. Um, well, in the public, sounds great for charters if you're a charter company. The, yeah, that's and that charter companies absolutely pushed um, this bill. I can I can tell you the the um, sponsor in the House was Carlo Trujillo out of um, South Tampa, and the sponsor in the Senate was Kelly Stargell out of Polk County. Um, it was also um, pushed, and we showed at the very, very end, it was hard, hard pushed by a group called Parent Revolution, which is out of California. And so California <laughs> parents, yes, so they were called Parent Revolution. They were here last year, and they were much more um, visible last year. Mm -hmm. um, they would come with par California parents, and California parents would testify. And last year, we actually had committee meetings in which California parents were allowed to testify, and Florida parents were not. And so this year they learned their lesson and they let Florida parents testify. But in the last week of session, a video showed up saying that it was from a group called Sunshine Parents that no one could find, had no website, no one knew about. And um, a woman named Kat McGorry, who is a reporter for um, the Tampa Bay Times mm -hmm. and the Miami Herald, did a fantastic investigative piece and found out that the video was, surprise, surprise, produced by Parent Revolution. So it was a California group that has passed this legislation in other states um, that was to a large extent behind it. It was also supported by um, uh, Governor Bush, former Governor Bush's um, Foundation for Florida's Future, his um, nonprofit organization. And then um, the, yeah, <laughs> the Florida. Sean D. And There's a lot of money in foundations, man. We're going to go fight for truth and justice all over the United States. As long States. as it pays. That's, that's how it goes. There we right? go. That's, that's the American way. And um, the, the, Florida, <laughs> the Florida Chamber of Commerce 
um, which is, um, I have discovered, not a statewide organization. It's not a statewide chamber, which when you hear the Florida, Florida chamber, chamber, you think it is. But it's like every other chamber. It's an independent group, and a large um, portion of their membership comes out of Duval County. Um, but they testified at each committee. That's Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. And so they, they, um, they testified at each committee actually calling it their bill. This is our bill. Please pass our bill. Mm-hmm. Um, so those were some of the people who were working. Wow. But I, the important thing that, that I do want to get out there, not a single Florida parent group supported Parent Trigger. The Florida PTA, um, the um, United Latin American Citizens, the NAACP, Fund Education Now, um, Save Duval Schools, 50th No More, Mary's United for Public Education. Um, there were about 30 um, parent groups representing over a million Floridians, and none of them supported Parent Trigger. All of them stood united in protest um, against Parent Trigger because they really believed it was a wedge to turn public assets over to private um, interests. Yeah, and it did fail. Anyway. It failed in a 2020 tie, the yeah. exact same way it failed last year. That's but that's right. all you need. That's right. There you go. That's One vote difference. makes a difference because the 2020 is what got us there. Yeah. So, and I, and I think that's a testament to the the, the process. There, I, Throughout that, there was, like you said, folks are testifying, folks yes. are calling their um, absolutely uh, senators, representatives uh, to let them know where you know that they did not support yes. the bill. So the, I think some individuals believe that or, or have a feeling that you know I'm just one voice, right? Correct. I'm just one person. What could I really do? I make one phone call. What does that really mean? Mm-hmm. Well, they actually keep count of how many folks are. Even, so even if you can't get there in person, they keep count of. How many are going forward against a particular Absolutely. bill? Absolutely, that's that's how they and, and we make know, their decisions. We know through our partners that being able to track um, tens of thousands of emails and phone calls um, went to Tallahassee against mm-hmm. this bill. Um, so we consider this a um, triumph for real Florida parents because um, at least twenty of the senators um, it, it passed the House. Um, it passed the House um, with bipartisan opposition. The um, entire Democratic caucus voted against it in the House, and um, seven Republicans crossed the aisle to also, which was an improvement over last year, actually, because last year um, there wasn't 100 percent support from the from the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Um, There were um, Democrats who voted for it, and there were Democrats who decided to take a walk when the vote was being taken. Mm -hmm. Um, But this year, everybody voted, um, and then we had some bipartisan support. And then in the Senate, just like last year, um, well, this year, actually, the one Democrat who voted for it last year voted against it this year. And um, found him, didn't yeah, like well, back we, we had we didn't find him, but his constituents definitely were heard. Let's just, you know. And then we had um, we had five Republicans who joined with the with the Democrats. And the really wonderful thing is, no, there were six Republicans who joined with the Democrats and five of them had voted for it last year, year. but had heard from their constituents and changed their minds. So people who think this is all just party and people decide before they went in, um, at least for those um, senators, they definitely heard the message and knew that that they were going to have to answer when they went home if they didn't support the point of view that their constituents were telling them to. That's fantastic. Good, good. Well, so the, again, the, coming back to the uh, fact of on May 18th, uh, you have the conversation, yes. um, community conversation. Uh, it's May 18th, 930 to noon at the University Area Community Center. Absolutely. Um, so you can find out more information by visiting where? Um, to register as the, well? The easiest way to do it is to go to the website, all the number four schools.org. All for schools. All the, the number, number four, four. schools dot org and hit the get involved tab and it will pull up both parent university, which is finished for this year, but the community conversation. So that's the easiest um, address to remember. All right. Thank you. Appreciate right. your time. Thanks, guys. Thank All right. Thank you again. Thank you very much. It's great All to right. be here. Always good to see Thank you. you. Right. Thank you. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed another entertaining installment of Community Conversations with the Trio. To keep the conversation going, stay connected with us by visiting cctrio.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and iTunes by searching the CC Trio. Community Conversations with the Trio. Dr. G, Sean D, and me.